Hey, I'm Dr. David Jockers, and I'm here on the Mitochondrial Summit with Laura Frontero. And we talked all about mitochondrial health. We talked about mitophagy, where it's this amazing process where your body breaks down old, damaged mitochondria and renews them and creates new, young, healthy, stress-resilient mitochondria. So we talked about some of the best strategies for that. We talked about best foods, herbs, um, nutritional strategies, how to time out your, your meals, right, and, and your nutrient timing. Uh, in order to get the best mitochondrial renewing effect. And so your mitochondria, the healthier your mitochondria are, the healthier your brain and your body are. And so you want to do everything you can to support your mitochondria. So you're going to love this summit. Start us off with what mitochondria dysfunction is. Let's just jump right into it. Yeah, well, the mitochondria are within all the cells of our body, and they classically we learn that they create all the energy, and that that is what they do. And they they also have a sensory structure, meaning that they kind of sense what's happening in our environment, and they will adapt their function based on what's happening. Like if they feel like the cell is is under threat, or if there's a pa- like a pathogen or or toxins, or if we're under a tremendous amount of stress, they'll slow down the energy production. And they'll almost basically like put up a shield and they will create more oxidation. Um, and that's all to protect the cell. But if they're stuck in that position of kind of a hypo metabolism and a pro oxidative state, then the mitochondria themselves become very dysfunctional, right? Even though they're, they're, their goal is to protect the, the cell, to protect the body, but they start becoming dysfunctional. And normally we have a mechanism and it's called mitophagy where our body actually breaks down damaged mitochondria. The mitochondria become damaged not only because they become pro-oxidative, but just in the general day-to-day, even if we're super healthy and um, you know we're, we're, we feel great every day, we're still producing a lot of oxidative stress that's damaging our mitochondria. So we should be turning over bad mitochondria and actually breaking them down and then reusing the, their materials to create new healthy mitochondria so we can be more stress resilient, so we can have more energy, so we can really function and thrive. Our brain has more mitochondria than pretty much all the other cells of the body. I believe the testes and the ovaries have more than the brain, but for every cell, every neuron, you have roughly about 10,000 mitochondria per neuron, whereas your muscle cells have about 1,000 mitochondria, so 10 times more in your nerve cells. And that's why they take up so much of the oxygen, so much of the glucose, so much of the the um, the energetic needs that goes into our brain. And that's because the mitochondria are constantly uh, taking the, the metabolites and producing energy. And so through, you know, again, just daily stress, we are creating uh, mitochondrial damage. And so we should be breaking down the damaged structures and recycling them, renewing them. And we call that mitophagy and creating new, young, uh, stress-resilient mitochondria. When we're not able to do that, when we're in a metabolic state that is not allowing for healthy levels of mitophagy, or if we're in a state where our cells, our body feels like we're we're in a lot of danger, like our toxic bucket, we've accumulated so much toxicity that the body is protecting itself. It's almost like hibernating and protecting itself. Or if our pathogen load is so high, or if we've experienced a lot of trauma, we have post-traumatic stress from that. If those things are happening, if we're not sleeping well, right? And our circadian rhythm is all disrupted, then the mitochondria are not able to be repaired properly. And so if that's the case, then we end up with kind of these older, senescent or aged mitochondria that don't function well. They become very metabolically inflexible, meaning that normally they should be really good at burning fat for fuel. However, when they become damaged by all the different stressors we talked about, um, hyperglycemia is another big one. When we have high blood sugar, or high insulin for a long period of time, these things damage the mitochondria and then they're not able to reshape and renew. And so now they're not able to burn fat effectively for fuel and burning sugar as an energy source is good for short spurts where we don't have a lot of oxygen. Like think, for example, if you're running, if you're sprinting, we have to produce a lot of energy through glycolysis, through breaking down sugar. And we really can't rely on fat as an efficient fuel source 
when we are when we are sprinting, when we're running really fast, or if we're lifting weights, lifting heavy weights, or something like that, for that short period of time, we really need to burn sugar. However, most of the time we should be burning fat. If we get in a state where our mitochondria are no longer able to burn fat, we're all we're doing is producing sugar. And you think about when you're exercising at a high intensity, you build up a lot of acid, right? Lactic acid is a byproduct. So it's very inefficient fuel. It's very dirty fuel. There's a lot of free radicals that are formed um, that create, that ramp up inflammation in the body. And it becomes a vicious cycle where we can't produce enough energy. We can't break down fat effectively as an energy source. And we just create more and more stress in our system. And we can't um, renew our mitochondria to create new healthy mitochondria. So we basically need to reset our system. But mitochondrial dysfunction is really at the root of all chronic degeneration. I mean, think about like in the brain, if there's so much mitochondria in the brain, then if those mitochondria are not functioning well, over time, that's gonna lead to neurodegenerative conditions. In the heart, the heart is also uh, an area where we have a lot of mitochondria, roughly about 5,000 mitochondria per cell, per cardiac cell. So when the mitochondria start breaking down, we're much more likely to develop congestive heart failure. Um, you know, so we're going to develop these kind of chronic degenerative conditions when the mitochondria are not able to function the way that they were designed.